Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today, for a bit of a change, I'm looking at a model in O-Gage from Helgen. It's been quite a while since I last reviewed something in O scale and I saw today's model online and I thought yeah why not we're going to give this a try. So today's model is this, it is the Helgen Catfish Hopper in O scale and this is a model that Helgen brought out in 2016 and just recently they released a new batch of them with some new liveries and different numbers and such so I decided to pick one up. The RRP for these models is £124 and I bought this one from Hattons for £105.40 which is a fairly good little discount there. If you'd like to do the same I'll pop some affiliate links down in the description for you. Honestly though when you consider the size of this model and the fact that it is just a two axle model it doesn't have bogies or anything it does seem a little bit pricey particularly compared with other manufacturers of O scale that I've looked at recently Dapol and Ellis Clark. This is certainly the most I will ever have paid for a model of this sort of size and so I'm really hoping to see that extra money reflected in the model really otherwise I won't consider this good value. But at the moment I have no idea what this is like. It does look good from the images I've seen online but is the model actually good or have we been catfished? Okay I won't make jokes, let's get started. So, as you can see, this small model is packed in a massive box that's about four times the size of it, so we've got a healthy dose of the old Helgen efficiency there. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the model I've got is 4356. It's a BR Olive late catfish ballast hopper, and there's the running number. It also says that this has got sprung buffers. Damn, spoilt the surprise. And it's era 728 which is actually a really cool thing to include on the packaging, isn't it? Because if you're just starting off and you know what era you want to model, you can walk into a model shop and just look at the boxes and figure out what is suitable for you and your layout. That is pretty cool. Okay, are you ready? Let's get this out and see what this catfish is like. How do I get this open? Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Come on now, a smaller box would have really saved a lot of money here in terms of packaging and shipping. But fair enough, hopefully it will have been well protected. We got any paperwork or anything? Nope, no instructions or anything. All right, so it really is just the wagon and I can't see any accessories either. So I guess every detail included with this model is actually fitted to it, let's see. So again, Look at all this, great big blocks of foam fastened to the packaging. So yeah, it is well packaged, I'll give it that. If nothing's broken here, then perhaps the inefficient packaging will have been worth it. All right, you ready for the reveal? Let's unwrap. Wow, so this is something I couldn't see on the listing images, the interior of the hopper. Yeah, there's some detail in there, isn't there? Right, let's lift it up. All right, here it is. Yep, yeah, the Helgen Catfish. And yeah, the weight isn't that impressive. I think with a lot of the rolling stock I've reviewed in O-Gage in the past, there's been a lot of metal work on it. The Dapol wagons almost always have a die-cast chassis. The Hatton's Warwell was entirely made of metal. The same was true of the Ellis Clark press flow. This one is more expensive than any of those, and yet it's plastic. Yeah, we've got a plastic hopper body, and the sole bar here is plastic as well. And it really just seems to be the frames here that are die cast. So it's not dreadfully heavy, really. It's got a fair bit of weight to it. It's not, I would say, light, but a uh, bit disappointed in how plasticky this is, to be honest. Um, the finish, though, is fine, as you can see. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And the decoration all looks pretty good. And so does the level of detail. So mixed feelings on first glance. I'll tell you a little bit about these catfish hoppers in real life and then we'll have a bit of a closer look at the model and see if it can justify that price with some of its details. All right, let's give it a go. So these were built by Metro Camel and 716 of these catfish hopper wagons were built between 1954 and 1961 and they were kind of British Railways standard small hopper for transporting ballast. The catfish also had a sister wagon known as the dogfish wagon. 
which were actually far more numerous with over 1,200 of those being built. Having said that, all of the catfishers were withdrawn from service in 2006, although some still remain today under preservation. Well folks, Helgen never failed to disgust me with how expensive yet cheaply made their models are. This is officially the most expensive O-scale wagon I have ever purchased, and besides the cheapo open wagons from Dapol, this is also the lightest, at a puny 136 grams. Now to put that into perspective for you, this is the Ellis Clark Press Flow wagon, this weighs 190 grams, and it was 35 pounds less expensive for me than this Helgen Catfish wagon. Here is the Dapol Turbot Wagon, this weighs 227 grams, nearly 100 grams more, and this cost £59.46, which is £45 cheaper than this Helgen Catfish. And here is the Hatton's Warwell Wagon, which is 493 grams, almost four times the weight of the Catfish, and it was £20 cheaper than this Catfish Wagon. There is nothing wrong with this wagon at all, the level of detail is good, the build quality is fine, yada yada yada, but there is no good reason why this should be so darn expensive, when all of these other manufacturers have produced better models, most of them with the same level of detail or better, for much less money. It's the same story as usual with Helgen, and I'm not impressed. So, at this price, at the very least, I would expect a die-cast running plate or a sole bar. The fact that this is plastic is just disappointing. This is O-scale. The models are supposed to be beefy, they're supposed to be quality. At this kind of price, this model should have been as well. Heck, I'd even expect the hopper itself to be made of metal for that price. The fact that it isn't is disappointing. However, the level of detail and the features on this are great, and we'll talk about that now. So the finish is good, yeah, nothing wrong with the finish at all, really good paintwork on this in fact, and there's quite a bit of decoration as well as you can see, all of which is done really nicely. Although do notice we don't have a separate etched version of this plate here, you'll remember with the significantly cheaper Ellis Clark press flow we did get a full set of etched plates to fit instead of the printed ones. Poor value Elgin. The buffer beams are quite impressive, as you can see we do have sprung buffers, as promised, I do like that feature, although the buffers are just plastic here, not metal, as you might expect. One thing that is really good quality though is this screw link coupling, yeah that's proper metal, it really does screw in and out, and it seems to be a very sturdy piece as well, that is good to see. You've also got a pre-fitted vacuum pipe and also a lamp bracket on there as well. There's also these handrails which are good and sturdy, I suspect those are probably made of metal because they're good and strong. You've got the steps here which I believe are part of the sole bar but they are separately painted. Only the front of them has been separately painted though, the rest is in green so again a little bit cheap and nasty compared with some. The axle boxes are impressive though for this reason, look at this I can spring them up and down. Don't forget though, this feature is not exclusive to Helgen, the Ellis Clark press flow also had this feature. Another feature I like is on the other side of the sole bar, you've got this turning wheel which has been made free to turn, which is really cool. Now that is good, uh, this is the sort of feature that elevates a model above the rest. It's a shame that that's about the only feature that does, but hey, we'll, we'll recognise that. The underframe is quite impressive as well, there's obviously not as much going on as on the likes of the press flow or whatever, but yeah, there's a fair bit of moulded detail. You've got some brake rigging fitted here as well as some pipe work and such. Yeah, it's certainly not bad at all. On one end of the model we've got this pressure tank, I assume, which looks like a fairly complex separately fitted part. I do like it when these hoppers have detail underneath the hopper body, that looks good. And I think the other end is even better, you've got some complex framework here as well as this wheel which is marked shut and open, so I assume that is for operating the hopper doors perhaps. Yeah, some good detail on there. And then of course the inside of the hopper is separately painted into this brown colour and you have got some interior detail on there as well. So yeah, the model is absolutely fine, the level of detail is good, the build quality surprisingly is really good, it's very neat and tidy, none of the parts seem to be loose or are showing visible glue. From that point of view it's absolutely fine. If this model was the same price as models from some of the other manufacturers, if this was say 70 quid, it would be absolutely fine. The standard of this model is much the same as from the other manufacturers that I've mentioned, except for the fact that it is lighter and more plasticky. 
So really, this should have been the same price or a bit cheaper than the other models I've mentioned. Not significantly more expensive as it is, but such is Helgen. Anyway, let's get this onto the O-scale layout and let's see how it performs. So here is today's test setup. I've got the Dapol 08 shunter with some open wagons behind it. They have the chain link couplings on them though, so to test something with similar screw link couplings, I've got the Dapol brake van set up behind the catfish wagon, which is here in the center. And yeah, this seems to be reasonably free rolling. Yeah, there's certainly nothing catching there. All of the brake pads seem to be avoiding the wheels nicely. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's particularly free rolling, although that could be because it's so light, it just doesn't get momentum. But uh, yeah, it's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. So with that, let's back up the 08 shunter and let's see if I can get a bit of a, a coupling done here. Now, what direction do I need? Not that one. Here we go. Uh, I might end up covering the camera. I suppose, <laughs> during this, so apologies in advance if I do. I guess I will try to use the uh, the chain link, no, the screw link coupling on the Helgen model. I'm making a bit of a pig's ear of this already. There we go. Oh, damn it. I almost did it then. Hang on. There we go. Hooked. All right, and that gives you plenty of space, as you can see, they're not pulled together too tightly, so you should be able to manage some reasonably tight curves with this. Buffers seem to meet nicely as well. Okay, let's do the other one. I will, again, I'll use the Heldron couplings in both cases. Let's see if I can do this first time. That would be nice, wouldn't it? There we go. Very good. And with that, let's send it off. And, well, I guess the first thing I'll do is put it across some points. So let's do that. Right, let's take this fairly steady. Hopefully everything else on the track will play ball. So there goes the 08. Now, there we go. Oh dear, oh dear, what's happening here? <laughs> I'm not sure which way my shuttle system is set. So I guess we should try again. There we go. Has it been okay? I can't really see from where I am. I can't hear any issues, so that sounds good. Let's reverse the direction. Try it again backwards. Now they should be pushed together now, so... Yeah. Seems good, doesn't it? So that's really the worst test I have. Uh, let's try it again a little bit faster this time. go not a very smooth change over the points there but yeah that seems absolutely fine so now I'm going to engage the shuttle system and we'll see how it gets on here goes so we've got that tight curve coming up let's see how it gets on there no well, seems to be pretty good yeah no issues at all there so the catfish performance wise I cannot fault it um, nothing on my setup can cause it to derail. I'm not seeing any issues with buffer lock or anything like that. Seems to be reasonably free rolling. The couplings are good quality. They are definitely functional. Yeah, everything considered, it all seems to be in order, doesn't it? So a good, good wagon from a performance point of view. Let's have some ratings then for the Helgen Catfish Wagon in O-Scale. The level of detail is tremendous. I've given it four and a half star, lots of great details here. The decoration's pretty good, I like the finish. You've got really good quality screw link couplings, sprung buffers, sprung axle boxes, loads of detail sort of down in the framework of the hopper. Really, really good. I've had to knock it off half a star because it didn't come with etched builder's plates like the Ellis Clark press flow did. That's a very, very minor technicality though. Otherwise, level of detail perfect. The performance is similar as well, I, in fact I can't fault this at all. Runs really really nicely, it's nice and free rolling, it handles points, tight curves without a problems and the couplings work fine, so 5 star. The quality is also really high, the build quality is good, the decoration seems to be nice and precise, no visible glue that I noticed, the couplings seem to be good, they don't fall apart or anything like that, 
it is just quite plasticky. I wish there was more metal on board, and if there had have been, it would have gotten a five on quality as well. Value for money though is really where this model falls down, with an RRP of £124 and a typical retailer price in the region of £105.40, this model just does not meet the mark for that price. I think if there was a bit more die cast on this then yeah maybe it would be slightly better value, but still there are plenty of other models from other manufacturers that do have more die cast than this, they have more complexity, more detail, and yet they're significantly cheaper in every single case that I looked at. So value for money unfortunately here is really really poor, quite typical of Helgen really. So overall that 7.34 out of 10 or a grade of C, that would have been a lot higher had the value and quality been sorted out. But still, into the logbook we go, we're starting a new O-scale rolling stock logbook for the year. Hopefully there's going to be more to come to populate this ranking. But overall, yeah, not too bad. If you don't mind the price or if you can find one at a bit of a discount, they're absolutely fine. Well folks, that will just about do it for another review. Been a while, really, since I did O-Scale, so this has been a nice change. Yeah, overall, like I say, this wagon is perfectly good. If the price was a bit more reasonable and there was a little bit more metal on it, there would be absolutely no reason whatsoever why I would not recommend this to you. As it is, yeah, the value for money is quite poor here, but hey, if you really want a catfish in O-Scale, or a dogfish, I guess, did they do a dogfish? I think they did then uh, yeah, this is your only option, and the model itself, once you've sort of regained consciousness after the horrendous rip-off of the price, is perfectly good. So if you want to pick one up, I could recommend it overall. Let me know what you think. Have I been too harsh on this for the price? What do you think would be a more reasonable price for this model? Please do let me know in the comments, but for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again soon for another review. All right, cheers, folks. Take care.